Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Well, hello, hello, everyone. I am just Aaron and welcome to another edition of PowerPoints. Oh, glory to God. I am so excited about what God is doing. I am so thrilled. I thank each and every one of you. I thank my subscribers. I thank my supporters. I thank you for allowing me to come into your homes once again. Glory to God, by the grace of Almighty God, to share with you the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the anointing that abideth in your word. Father, I also thank you that for the anointing that abideth on the inside of us by way of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the word of God, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that we are not hearers of the word only, as the Bible says, deceiving ourselves into deception. But I thank you that we are therefore doers of the word of God, doers of the will of God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless my supporters right now. I ask you to bless those who are watching right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, to God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, I also ask you right now for utterance in the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is great and greatly to be praised. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be continuing with uh, the benefits of praying in tongues, the benefits of praying in tongues. So if you have your Bibles, please go and grab your Bibles, grab you something to write with. <laughs> Glory to God, because I have a whole lot to share with you. What the Holy Ghost has been sharing with me, what he has been depositing in my spirit. So please, I encourage you. Go grab the word of God because the word of God and the spirit of God, they are one. The spirit and his word are one. Inseparable. You cannot separate the spirit of God from his word. So please, my dear friends, go grab your Bibles. Go grab something to write with a piece of paper, so a pen, a pencil. If you don't have that, grab a crayon. Glory to God. Grab a marker. We're going to get into this. I have so much to share with you. Hallelujah. So while you're grabbing your Bibles, I'm just going to wait for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to sing in the spirit for a minute while you grab your Bibles and perhaps grab some coffee or some tea or something like that. Orale posiele mushta. Glory to God. Robo sai le moko sala. Jele boroto snele maso rodobo. Rale baso rale ala maso. Rale moso rele mashnia. So rale mashe roto sa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. All right. So now that you have your Bibles, which is the word of Almighty God, and you have something to write with, let's get right into it. Hallelujah. Um, turn to John. Praise the Lord. Turn to the Gospel of John, uh, beginning in verse 21. Let's start in verse 21. Hallelujah. And like I said on previous programs, that we are establishing a biblical foundation for what we as believers believe. Glory to God. And we, we're going to just load you up with piles of information 
Glory to God and, and the word of God, because the word of God says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So why you turn into John to the book of John? Um, chapter 20, verses 21. I just want to um, I just want to say this. Uh, Howard Carter, known as a Pentecostal pioneer, once said that speaking with tongues, it is a flowing scream that should never dry up but will continually enrich the life spiritually. Glory to God, child of God. Kenneth e. Hagin, great man of God. Kenneth e. Hagin, we uh, know him as Papa Hagin. He uh, said that, uh, that speaking with tongues is an initial evidence or sign of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He also said that speaking with tongues is a continual experience for the rest of one's life to assist us in the worship of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. So in John chapter 21, beginning in verses 21 through 23, you have your Bibles ready. Read. Glory to God. Then Jesus said to them again, peace to you. Just as the father has sent me forth, so I am sending you. And having said this, he breathed on them. He breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. In verse 23, the word says, now having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by him. OK, let's start right there. It says now having received the Holy Spirit, glory to God, talking about the apostles. Having now having received the Holy Spirit, glory to God. What I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about the benefits of tongues of speaking in other tongues. I want to talk to you about two separate experiences, but yet one God. Two separate experiences, but yet one God. Hallelujah. Because throughout the years, we've been taught that uh, in Acts chapter two, that's when the apostles and that's when everybody um, received the Holy Spirit. But according to the word of God, that's not so. In Acts chapter two, I'm going to share with you that that was the outpouring of the spirit. That was the outpouring of the gift, the free gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues or the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So that was something totally separate. OK, that was a separate experience. That was the fire of God falling. All right. See, we see here in John chapter 20, uh, verses 21. Then Jesus said to them again, peace to you, just as the father has sent me forth. So I am sending you. And having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And verse 23 says, now having received the Holy Spirit, how do we know that the apostles received the Holy Spirit here and not in the book of Acts? Well, verse 23 says, now having received the Holy Spirit, glory to God, now having received the Holy Spirit spirit. So they got born again right then and there after having received the Holy Spirit. Now, after having received the Holy Ghost or receiving Christ, because when you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he is the one who recreates the human spirit. Glory to God. OK, so they got born again right then and there. They received the Holy Spirit. They received the indwelling presence of God Almighty. That's when the Holy Spirit moved on the inside of them. That's when he took up residence on the inside of their heart right then and there. Now, having received the Holy Spirit, glory to God. Now, let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter one, verses four through five. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts chapter one, verses four through five. Chapter one, verses four through five. 
When you have it, say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ready? Read. And while being in their company and eating at the table with them, he, Jesus, commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the father had promised. OK, we're going to share with you now. This is two separate experiences, but yet the same God, two separate experiences, but yet the same God. We just saw that they gave their lives to Jesus. They gave their hearts to Jesus. They were born again. They received Christ or they received the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So in Acts chapter two, they're not receiving another spirit or another form of God. They are receiving the free gift of God. They're not receiving a duplicate. They're not receiving a twin because the Holy Ghost has no twins. He is the very presence of God Almighty. He's the very presence of God, the father and the presence of Jesus, the anointed one. So in Acts chapter two, they did not receive a twin. They already received him in the gospel of John. So now they are getting ready to receive the gift of the father or the gift that the father has promised according to Jesus. Glory to God. All right. And while being in their company and eating at the table with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the father or but to wait for what the father had promised of which he said, you have heard me speak. Hallelujah. For John baptized with water. But not many days from now, you shall be baptized with. I said before on one program that that the infilling of the Holy Ghost, there's many different terminologies, but it's the same thing. OK, I said on the program prior to this, that the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Many different terminologies, receiving power from on high, being endued with power from on high. Here we see in verse five, Jesus saying, be being baptized with or placed in, introduced into the Holy Spirit. And one translation, we, we're going to we're going to take a look and we're going to see that the apostles talked about the free gift of God or receiving the free gift of God. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So he says, for John baptized with water, but not many days from now, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You shall be placed in, introduced into the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Write this down for me, if you will. There's a gift that's subsequent to receiving Christ or being born again. A gift that the father wants all of his children. Glory to God. Wants all of his children to have a gift that clothes you in power, a gift that clothes me in power, a gift that clothes us in power. And that's being baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's robosa ilemoshne leborasa rosuko male ralabasu relebanku sonomokala sile leboshta elebosa la balashte rosome elemanto. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You know, I want to say this. Uh, some years back uh, when I purchased my first vehicle or maybe my second vehicle. Um, oh, my God. Glory to God. You know, you purchase that vehicle. That vehicle has that that new car smell. You know what I'm saying? It has that new, fresh car smell. And you get inside of the vehicle and you start looking around at uh, many different gadgets and gadgets inside the vehicle. And uh, you start looking at many different buttons and you, you, you look at uh, many different things uh, or words that are abbreviated and you just don't know what it means. You know, you want to hit that button, but then you're like, oh, I don't think I should. 
<laughs> glory to God, because what if I hit that button and, you know, maybe the car stop or something like that, <laughs> or something like that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, same as <laughs> with the word of God. So now watch this. Now, the only time you really feel comfortable or you feel relaxed with hitting that button is, is when you take out the owner's manual. Glory to God. I know I did that one time. You know, I got inside my vehicle, just bought my vehicle. I looked at stuff and I looked at words that were abbreviated. I didn't know what it meant. And, you know, one part of me, I wanted to hit it, hit the button. But then I didn't want to hit it because what would happen if I hit this button? Because I don't know what that meant or I don't know what that means. So reach inside the glove department, pull out the manual, the owner's manual. Who knows the vehicle other than the owner or other than the manufacturer that factured that vehicle? Then you, 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 you begin to become enlightened. Glory to God. Now you get back in your vehicle. Oh, I know what that means. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The same is with the word. The same as with the spirit. Glory to God. If, in fact, you want to know the word of God, which is the will of God. You have to take time out and spend time with the Holy Ghost. You have to spend time in the presence of the Holy Ghost, because who other than the Holy Ghost reveals Christ to us? Who other than the Holy Ghost knows the word of God, knows the will of God? Jesus himself says, I am my father are one. So if you want to know what the word of God says about something, you open this book, you get inside of this manual, get inside of this book, spend time with the author who is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will transmit to you. He will reveal to you what thus says the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's a gift. Uh, uh, there is a separate experience. There is something that's subsequent uh, to uh, being born again or to salvation. And that's being baptized with the Holy Ghost, being placed into the Holy Ghost, uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Now, the word subsequent, you know, that might be a little blind to us. What, what, what does the word subsequent mean? You know. The word subsequent means something that comes after something else in time or order. Glory to God. Subsequent, write this down or, or you can Google it. Hallelujah. If you don't have a dictionary, I love the dictionary. Glory to God. If you don't have a dictionary present with you, Google it. Ask Google, what does subsequent means? OK, subsequent means something that comes after something else in time or order. So first you get born again. You give your life, you give your heart to Jesus. You become a child of God. Now, once you become a child of God, there is something else that follows that in time or order which is being baptized with the Holy Ghost, being placed into the Holy Ghost, being clothed with power or what we like to call being filled with the Holy Ghost or receiving the free gift of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's take a look at Luke 24, Luke chapter 24. Glory to God. Rondoste el pasa. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke 24. When you have it, say amen. Hallelujah. Luke 24 verses 45 through 49. Hallelujah. Listen at what the word of God is saying. Children of God. Then he thoroughly. Who's the he referring to? Christ Jesus. Then Jesus thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. Then Jesus opened up their minds. He thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. And said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ Messiah should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead 
and that repentance, glory to God. Look at me, child of God. Look, and that repentance with a view to and as the condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name. Why did I say it like that? Because I, a lot of folk go to church and a lot of churches preach that being born again means that you get baptized with water. Now, baptism with water has its place and you should be baptized. It's a public confession of the death, burial and resurrection of the Christ that you have openly, that you have accepted Jesus. You have surrendered your life, your heart to Jesus. Glory to God. And you are now born again. You're now a child of God. So baptism with water has its place. But look at what Jesus said. And that repentance with a view to and as the condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Now watch this. You are witnesses of these things. Verse 49 says, watch what verse 49 says. And behold, I will send forth upon you what my father has promised. But remain in the city, Jerusalem, until you are clothed with power from on high. Shall I submit to you, child of God, that in Acts chapter two, that's when the fire of God fell. That's when the Holy Ghost manifested himself. He manifested his power. The fire fell and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. They received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That's not when they were born again. When they got born again was in John chapter 20, when Jesus said, now receive you the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Look at what he's saying. And behold, I will send forth upon you what my father has promised. What is he talking about? What is Jesus referring to? What did the father promise? The father promised a gift to all those who accept the Christ, to all those who belong to him. A gift shortly following being born again. A gift which simply put is being filled with the Holy Ghost or being baptized in the Holy Ghost. A gift that will clothe the child of God in power. See, when you give your heart to Jesus, when you repent, when you, when you ask the Lord to come into your heart, be Lord of your life, be Lord of your heart, be Savior. When you accept Christ, you accepted the Holy Spirit. You, at that point in time, at that moment, the indwelling presence of God moved on the inside of you, took up residence on the inside of you. But don't just stop there, God is saying. Go a little further and receive this gift that I have for you. Hallelujah. So that's the gift of the Father. Glory to God. Write this down. When you receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost or the gift, you are actually receiving the promise of my Father, Jesus says. He didn't want them to wait into Jerusalem to get born again because they were already born again. They received Christ in John chapter 20, verses 21 through 23. You saw that they received the Bible says in verse 23, it says now receiving or now having received the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So receiving the Holy Spirit at the time of being born again. That's the indwelling presence of God 
taking up residence on the inside of your spirit. Glory to God. And one more thing I would like to say, I would like to point out, you can't speak in tongues without being born again. It just simply cannot happen. Glory to God. And I have scripture for that. Glory to God. See, there's, there's, there's an order. You, Jesus told Nicodemus, what did Jesus told Nicodemus? Marvel not, Nicodemus, for you must be born again. So what is born, being born again? Being born of the spirit of God, being born anew, being born from above, being born of the spirit. He said, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Glory to God. You must be born again. Like I said, being baptized with water has a place. And we will see that in scripture as we go further into this message. But Jesus said, you must be born again. See, because see, you can be baptized with water and still make hell. It's not about being on the church roll or the church roster or joining the church because you can join the church and still make hell. But it's about Jesus. It's about your acceptance to him. It's about your relying on him. You're leaning on him. You're trusting on him or in him. It's about giving yourselves up to him. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at that again. Hallelujah. Luke 24. Glory to God. Verse 45. Then he thoroughly, Jesus, opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. He opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are New Testament believers. Who, who's going to open up our minds to understand the scripture? After they received the Holy Spirit, Jesus told them, now I'm being led by and directed by him. We depend upon the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You will not understand what the scriptures is talking about unless you spend time with the author. Unless you spend time with the heart of God. The Holy Ghost. He is the very presence of God Almighty. He's the very presence of the Father. He's the very presence of Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ, the Holy Ghost is. Jesus said, you must be born again. And then thoroughly, then he, Jesus, thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead. And that repentance, not being baptized in water, that repentance like I said, it is important to get baptized with water. But what comes first? See? And that repentance with a view to and as the condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. And behold, I will send forth upon you 
what my father has promised. So what took place in the book of Acts, Acts chapter two, what took place was Jesus sending forth upon his followers what the father has promised. That's what took place. The outpouring of the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, he says, and behold, I will send forth upon you what my father has promised, but remain in the city. Until. You are clothed with power from on high. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we can clearly see that these are two different separate experiences. But somehow the church, somehow we have managed to just bunch everything up. And in so doing, we have confused millions. We just bunched everything up. Turn to the book of Galatians. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How's everyone doing out there? Once again, I, I praise God for you all. Hallelujah. And I thank God for this opportunity to once again come before you and, and uh, share with you the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Galatians, praise the Lord. Rele moshte le burrotoshte, zorra la bashte, rala bautoso daba. Hallelujah. And when you have it, say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, glory to God. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. All right. Verses 22 through 23. Ready? Read. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The work which his presence within accomplishes. All right. That's the indwelling presence of God living on the inside of you, because receiving Jesus is receiving Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law that can bring a charge. The indwelling presence of God. Once the Holy Ghost moves in, when you surrender to Jesus, his the work that his presence on the inside of you accomplishes are the fruits of the spirit. Two totally different experiences, but yet one God. Verse 24, and those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with his passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line. Our conduct, our speech, our attitude, 
everything about us controlled by the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, some churches and some folk, you know, who uh, been been in this thing for a long time and, you know, going to church, playing church. Hallelujah. You know, it's time for us to wake up and realize that we need to stop going to church, stop playing church and understand and recognize that we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So a lot of folks who who have churches, you know, um, I came across a, a few folk, you know, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you know, but they they say they preach the word. And, you know, I don't believe in that Holy Spirit stuff. Well, look at what the scripture says. How can you not believe in the Holy Spirit when because of him, when in him, you have your life in God. It's because of the Holy Ghost that you have your life in God. How are you not going to believe in the very person that causes you to move in God, that causes you to breathe in God, that causes you to exist in God? That causes you to have your very being in God. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Look at verse 25. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit, we have our life in God. See? The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. When you give your life to Jesus, you are actually giving your life to the Holy Spirit. When you surrender your life to Christ, when Christ, when you accept Christ Jesus, when you accept Christ, you are accepting the Holy Spirit. The very presence of God, the Father. The very presence of of the Christ, the very presence of Jesus, the anointed Jesus. His spirit lives on the inside of you. His spirit lives on the inside of me. So how can you not believe in the Holy Spirit when in the Holy Spirit you have your life in God? A lot of times they'll say that, and then a lot of times I understand what they're saying because through the years, like I said, we bunch things up. You know, some, sometimes folk, when they say they don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you know, they don't believe in that tongue stuff. They don't believe in that tongue talking stuff. They don't believe, you know, that, and we just bunch things up. But see, that's the free gift of the Holy Spirit. That's being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's being baptized into, introduced into, placed into the Holy Spirit. But how can you not believe in the person who reveals Christ to you, child of God? The Holy Spirit. Now watch that. Watch it. Watch it. Galatians chapter 5. Write it down. Verses 22 through 23. Hallelujah. Write it down. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think Romans 5 5 says that the love of God was poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who has been given unto us. See, the only reason the love of God can be poured out in your heart, child of God, is because you have accepted Christ. 
to that one watching. The only reason the love of God has been poured out in your heart is because you have given Christ your life. And in so doing, he has given you his Holy Spirit. The indwelling presence of Christ living on the inside of you. And in verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. Now, when he moves in the work which his presence accomplishes. Is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Hallelujah. That's the first experience. But blessed be the name of Jesus, there is a second experience. And that's called being filled with the Holy Spirit. Two separate experiences, but yet one God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, like I said, we can readily see that receiving Christ is receiving the Holy Ghost. So whose presence are you receiving? The presence of Jesus. God Almighty. The presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus. So the love of God poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit at the time of accepting Christ Jesus into our hearts as Lord and Savior. Because one of the very first fruits that shows up that the work in which his presence accomplishes in you is love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Rotoshde le parotoshna. Rele poronishde. Ralapoto soto pokala. Je le poralalabasu. Child of God, lean on the Holy Ghost. Rely on Him. Jesus said, he will take what is of mine and shall reveal it to you. He will bring to your remembrance. He will cause you to recall whatsoever things I have said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.